Good morning everyone. It is now 10.34 a.m. I will be leaving my house at 11 a.m. I woke up at 9 today, so yay for two hours extra of sleep compared to yesterday. The Mary E. Pearson signing is actually at 3 p.m. today, so I am able to take a later train and still get there early. Very happy about that because I love my sleep. I already ate breakfast and as you can see, I'm ready to leave my house, but I won't be leaving until 11 a.m. By the time I got home last night, I was just really tired and I was planning on reading a bit more of The Beauty of Darkness, but I only read like so now I'm 73% done with the beauty of darkness. So I have 27% more to go. I definitely plan to get some reading done while I'm on the train. Not sure if I'll be able to finish it before the event, but I'm really hoping I can do that. I'm loving the third book so far. I enjoyed the first two, but I didn't love them, and I'm loving the third book. I think Leah is such an amazing character. I can't wait to see how this book ends, and I can't wait to meet the author, get my book signed, and talk to her about how much I enjoy her books. The book event is taking place in the bookstore today, so it's in the same area as yesterday. Also, I already ate breakfast, but I'm getting kind of hungry again. I'll probably find something to eat once I arrive in Naperville again, though so I don't know what I want to eat. I want to eat something cheap because I don't want to spend too much money, as you saw from yesterday, my $40 Ulta purchase. I really don't want to spend that much money on food, so I hope I can find a McDonald's there. <laughs> yeah, if not, I might go to Chipotle again, but I don't want to eat the same thing two days in a row. I'll let you guys know what I decide to eat once I get there. I will update you guys again once I arrive in Naperville. See you in the next clip. It's 1.43 now and I have arrived in Naperville, so I'm walking to the bookstore now. When I arrived at the train station, I got there pretty early, so I decided to eat at the train station. So I ended up getting McDonald's. I didn't vlog it, but I just got medium fries and a McChicken just because it's cheap and I wanted to save a little bit of money. I wanted to update you guys on my reading. I'm up to 90% through with The Beauty of Darkness. It's like about an hour, 20 minutes before the event starts. So if I can find a place to sit down and read, then that's what I'm going to do. with one of the characters from the Kiss of Deception um, Rima Chronicles trilogy um, and you can hang out with them for a day. Who do you think you'd hang out with and what do you think you'd do? Oh boy. <laughs> um, let me think. Um, the three main characters come to mind immediately. I also think of, well let me, s I'm sorry I cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple <laughs> answers, that's fine. Um, one person is like Gwyneth. Gwyneth always intrigues me because there's things I could learn from her, I am sure. <laughs> um, she's just very world savvy and um, and always holds back a little bit. So I, I really um, would enjoy hanging out with Gwyneth. Um, maybe just, you know, waiting tables with her. <laughs> um, as for the other characters, um, like say the main characters, uh, Leah, Rafe, or Caden. Um, whoa, that's really hard. Uh, probably <coughs> Leah, I think. I would love to hang out with Leah because um, I would probably, and where would I want to take her? I would probably want to take her to hang out with a bunch of ladies and have coffee because I think she's just a very strong person um, or she's, I can't say, certain things I can't say because I don't want to have spoilers here, <laughs> um, but I think she's a, a gal who has um, had something to say and she has maybe or maybe not found her voice and um, and she would be really good to chat with with a bunch of ladies and, and girls. Maybe, if anything, maybe Pauline, you know, um, even though my husband says, gosh, you know, he, he wonders why I'm not so quiet anymore. <laughs> I'm really, I think most writers are. They tend to be quieter um, people, but I'm also extremely loyal. So, you know, I like to think that maybe Pauline, I don't know. Um, but really, when I'm writing, writing characters, they're a little bit of everybody I've known. 
Um, I'm often asked, you know, about the inspiration for Leah, and um, Leah is a little bit of every strong woman I've ever known, which is everybody. You know, <clears throat> I think we all have strengths within us, and they're all a little bit different, and uh, Leah's strength happens to be her voice, but she doesn't always know how to use it. She has to sort of learn how to control her voice and to um, make the best use of it. And the thing is, she has something to say. You know, I think there's a lot of women who, they spend their whole life being shushed. You know, wait till, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all, and um, wait till, you know, you're called upon, and all of those things. And I think a, a, a woman who is outspoken <clears throat> can sometimes be held to a different standard than a man can. So, you know, Leah is like all of those women I've seen who have stood up for something, who, and also the ones that, in history, that I have never known, but they kind of led the way. So, that's kind of where Leah comes from. So, I know you said you're an organic writer, but do you ever find yourself kind of getting stuck with, like, a scene, or not really, like, I know you do all your post-it notes, but, like, kind of staring at them, like, I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with this story. Oh, absolutely. What do you do to like kind of help jumpstart yourself to kind of get back <coughs> on track? Well, one thing is I signed a contract, so, <laughs> <laughs> and I have a deadline, and I, I, I did actually go past my deadline, but that's kind of the obvious answer. Um, really, I think every writer experiences that. Thank you very much. And, you know, one thing is just, sometimes you're not inspired to write and so I, I've kind of learned when I first started out so it's like okay I have to wait for inspiration to hit me again uh, but I've learned that you can jumpstart inspiration and really a lot of times what it is it's the intimidation of the white blank page you sit down at a computer you see this blank page and you go oh you know I have to create again mm -hmm. and it's overwhelming um, how many of you are writers in here and how many of your secret writers, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, because I know there's always twice as many who would, that raise their hand. And the, the blank page is intimidating. Um, but sometimes it's not just that, that it's blank, you're just like, oh, you know, maybe you're, you're really loving your story at that point. And I've had, you know, that sort of like, I really like this last scene and now I have to do some of this other stuff. And um, so having daily goals, one thing I do is I am a religious word count keeper. And so I write down my word count every single day. Um, when you're self-employed, there's not a boss, you know, over your shoulder, you know, whipping you or anything. You just have to show up and do it. So, uh, although sometimes there should be. Um, but I uh, set goals and I know about how much I have to do in order to meet my deadlines, which is maybe about, uh, right now, usually my, I, I can't write much more than 1,500 words. For me, that's a lot. I know some writers can write 2,000, 5,000 a day, and that's not me. I hope someday I will be that person, but not yet. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing I do. Another thing that really helps me a lot is to put on earphones. And when I, I have playlists for all of my books, and for every new book, um, even in the Remnant Chronicles, I create a new playlist. And I have different playlists for different moods, you know, the fast, the slow, the instrumental, the rocking out. And I think I have like 300 songs for the Remnant Chronicles playlist, tons. And so I, I kind of pick moods I want to be in. But the minute I put those earphones in, it kind of blocks out the world and transports me back into the world that I've been working on. So that really helps a lot. And then the other thing is, is um, just be willing to write badly you know always remember revision is down the road you can always re revise um, because sometimes it's just getting those first few words done you know I'll say okay just write ten words you write ten words and you're kind of over that hump and you keep going so uh, you know there's a billion little tricks and I keep reinventing new ones all the time so what I love about um, what you do is you create your own worlds. And um, so you want to talk a little bit about the worlds that you 
Oh, the world building. I would love to. You know, like I said, there's some things I can't say because it's spoilerish, but I think a lot of people, Don, <laughs> have figured out, and you know, a lot about this world now, um, Annalise. Uh, so when I set out to, to um, write this world, it kind of started with the idea of story. Um, one of the, you know, there's so many different inspirations that go into it, but one of the things was story and how we pass on story from generation to generation. I mean, storytelling is the oldest form of um, telling history, really, you know, telling all about your family, passing on everything, and the role it plays in our lives and in our families. And in this world, we start out with a grandmother who uh, she and her granddaughter are in really in this world that's very devastated and they have scavengers coming after them. And we don't know a whole lot about this world and we'll find out about it as the stories continue as well throughout all the books. Um, but the grandmother has nothing to feed her child, her grandchild. <clears throat> and so she, she uses story to feed her. And one of the things we're always doing is adapting story for that moment and that need. And so, you know, as she's telling the story, she has to adapt it for the age of the child. She's just a young child. She can't tell her all the truths. So she, she you know, sort of draws her in and uses fairy tale as a way to do that. Once upon a time, there was a princess just like you. And so the, the beginnings of the whole princess mythology begin and then we move on to Leah and and again no spoilers <laughs> trying to be careful here uh, but then we're in this other world now and it's a world built on the ashes of another and so as I'm uh, as I'm building this world as a writer I'm trying to draw from um, things that are recognizable to us and trying to see how like let's just let's just say <coughs> our world were in ruin and devastation today uh, and not necessarily all these smart people were saved you know it's very random like only you know there's a, just a handful of survivors and you are no longer worried about whether you're running out of juice on your iPhone you're worried about the next meal and who's get c coming after you maybe to make you the next meal. So what you're doing is you are in survival mode. You're not worrying about, you know, teaching, reading, or, or doing any of these things. You are in survival mode. And let's just carry that a step further. What can you actually pass on? I thought about this when we had a blackout um, at our house. I, this is how a writer's mind works. Um, in California, we don't have blackouts very often, and <clears throat> the power was out for like 12 hours. Oh my. Um, and I started thinking, what if it doesn't come back on? What would we do? I don't even know how to make a battery. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. Really, how much could you personally pass on? And if all of your knowledge is wrapped up in um, places that no longer have any value or use, like you know, in a digital computer, um, where do you get this information from? So that was one of the things that I thought about a lot as I'm building this world that's built on the ruins of another. And uh, so I think that's about all I can say. <laughs> but I did have to do a lot of research. Actually, in, in the setting, um, I, I pulled from places that I've been. Uh, Teravin is bit based very much on a small northern California beach town, uh, Avila Beach, and also on uh, Verano, Italy, where I've been before. It's a small town off of Venice, I mean a small island off of Venice, and the, um, the houses are all painted different colors. There's like, I mean, we're talking bright colors, like lime green, bright orange, um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, like a little fishing town. <coughs> town. They do lots of other things there now, um, make lace and stuff. But 
I asked one of the locals, I said, why do you paint your houses? Every single one's a different color. Why do you do that? She said, oh, it's a long tradition. It started, um, you know, hundreds of years ago where the fishermen wanted their homes painted bright colors so that when they were far off, they could see where home was and see family, you know, waving for them, waving them in so they could tell which one was theirs. And I thought, oh, that, that's just so lovely. And I fell in love with the place. So, you know, sometimes it's from places I've actually been to. And then sometimes, the, you know, some of the scenes, places are built on, um, you know, just uh, imagining what a city would look like once it's in ruins. It's 417. I just left the Mayor E. Pearson signing. It was wonderful. I'll talk more about it later when I get home. I'm panting right now because my train leaves at 430. And I'm trying to get there as fast as I can so I don't miss it because if I miss that one, then the next train comes in two hours. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you guys once I get home. It's 6.53 now and I just got home. I'm going to go find some food first because I'm hungry and then I will update you guys once I finish eating. When your brother buys sushi, but he doesn't buy none for you. By the way, sushi is my favorite food and I am very tempted to eat his food, but I'm going to be a nice sister and not. I found some fried rice, which is good as well. So that's what I'm going to eat. I think that should be enough. Now in the microwave. I have not eaten in a bit over six hours, so I'm very excited to finally get some food in my stomach. So I have finished eating. It's about 7.20 right now. I ate pretty quickly because I was pretty hungry. But now I'm going to talk a little bit about the event First thing, I got this little fan right here, it's shaped like a heart. We got this at the beginning of the event and the author took a picture of everyone holding these up. If she posts it on Twitter or something, I will insert the picture right here. Also, I saw Lainey at this event, which was so unexpected, I did not know she was coming, but it was really great seeing a familiar face. We sat next to each other and we talked a bit and she helped me take a picture with Mary E. Pearson, so thank you Lainey for that. Now I'm going to show you guys all these signed books that I got. First book. Oh yeah, I also got a bookmark and I got it signed too. So it just says for Sandy with best wishes and then her signature. I think her signature is really pretty. The Heart of Betrayal, which is the second book. I don't know what this says. I'm pretty sure it's something in the book, but I can't remember. I'm sure everyone has shown it, but that third book is so big. It's almost 700 pages. There you go. It says for Sandy with many things for going on this journey. I wasn't able to finish the book before the event started, but I finished the book when I was on the bus going home. I knew I was going to like it, but I loved this book. I thought it was really great, and I'll talk more about it in my August wrap-up. The book event was really great. Mary E. Pearson was super nice, and when meeting her, she actually takes the time to talk to you. The line did go a bit slower, but it was nice being able to talk to the author. It was a pretty small event. There was like 35 people, and I really enjoyed being there. Now I'm going to end the vlog. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed me vlogging. I was pretty self-conscious doing it in public, but I feel like I got a decent amount of clips. So I really hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!